Welcome back to Doomsday Clock, right here at Comic Storian, your home for audio dramas of your favorite comic books, video games, and movies. The Doomsday Clock series is a sequel to The Watchmen. It takes place years after the original comic book, in which the world of Watchmen is officially ending, and Ozymandias has rounded up a brand new Rorschach, Mime and Marionette, and gone looking for Dr. Manhattan, the only individual that can possibly save their universe. They found him in the DC universe, and decided to go there looking for the two most intelligent individuals, Batman and Lex Luthor. When Ozymandias went to go find Lex Luthor, he discovered the comedian alive and entered a battle with him, while Rorschach went to go find Batman and discovered that, well, Batman thinks that he's crazy and put him in Arkham Asylum. Today we'll be covering issues 6 and 7, and I hope you guys enjoy. On her world, a young Erica Manson sits hiding beneath the counter in her father's puppet store. Tell us where the doll is, old man! Someone shouts. Her father is knocked to the floor in front of her, and Erica cries out tears in her eyes. In the present day, Marionette and Mime are walking down a sewer tunnel, their hands held up by the Joker's goons who are pointing guns at their backs. I can't have you and Cat got his tongue cartwheeling around the town slaughtering men like pigs. <laughs> Pushing the broken Batman in a wheelchair before him. It makes me look bad. Our mistake won't happen again, Marionette tells him with a smile. The Joker smiles wider, telling her, I would usually carve off your face, but I'm not in the mood. The bat at last is mine. <laughs> they suddenly stop seeing three of Mr. Freeze's goons lost in the tunnels ahead. The men seem scared as the Joker and his crew grow ever closer. The men seem lost and the Joker smiles wide. I have a proposition for you lost souls. Ditch the Parkers and join the Joker. The men look at each other for a moment. These are kind of hot. One huffs pulling off his hood. Shaky, where are you, pumpkin? Joker calls and from behind the rest comes a small man covered in tattoos. In his shaking hand, he holds up a tattoo gun. Ready to welcome our new guest to the circle. <laughs> he stutters. Marionette watches as her thoughts race back to her childhood. When she was a little girl in her father's shop when she first met Marcos Mies, whose family owned the store across the street. She saw him through the window and put on a puppet show for him. When she looked again, that boy was gone. She turned, startled to find the quiet boy standing next to her in the shop. Uh, hi, my name's Erica. Who are you? But Marcos remains silent, staring around at the hundreds of puppets that dangle off the walls. I know, the shop leaves a lot of people speechless for the first time when they see it. She smiles, tugging at the boy's arm, and she begins to lead him away, showing him around. Back in the tunnels, though, Mime and Marionette look on as Shaky begins to tattoo the new recruits, bringing screams of pain. And the Joker smiles, looking back at them over his shoulder. All right, I'm in a generous mood. Apology accepted, you two. <laughs> Which one of you wants to go next? Marionette shakes her head, clapping her hands together, pulling free her wire. Tattooed by Mr. Jitters over there? Pass, she snarls, and moving fast, she severs the gun of the closest goon. Hey, Mime, let's teach them how to wink, she smiles, and Mime nods, jamming his finger into another's eye sockets, bringing screams of pain and spouts of blood. Oh no, don't lose your head, boys, Joker calls, pulling free a pistol. That's why they call you the Joker? That one was a bit on the nose. Joker aims his pistol at the man that Mime is beating and fires. The round cuts through the head of the Joker's thug, dropping him to the floor. Oh, well that's embarrassing. Everyone stares in shock, but the Joker just smiles, turning back to Batman, pushing him down the tunnel. Well played, he calls over his shoulder. Come now, everyone. We wouldn't want to be later than we already are. Back in her world in an earlier time, Young Erica was walking down the street with her marionette puppet when she was stopped by the neighborhood kids. Why are you always smiling? It creeps everyone out, like your dad does. What kind of creepy old man plays with dolls? They tell her. The kids take the doll from her, throwing her to the ground and hitting her. Well, they call her dad a pedophile. Suddenly, glass bottles sail out of the air, cracking hard against the kids' heads, drawing blood. Marco stands by, ready with another bottle. And the ringleader tries to run away, but Erica chases her down, tackling her and making her apologize. Erica turns back to Marcos with a smile on her face. Do you have another bottle? 
she asks. But back in the tunnels, the Joker pulls aside a curtain, revealing a large chamber before them. He motions with his arms to the gathering of supervillains in the room. All this talk of the Superman theory has gotten everyone's tights in a bunch. They're huddled up as the Legion of Evil or Secret Society of Doom or whatever name they've landed on this time. He tells them, pushing Batman forward. Isn't this world wonderful? There are so many of them. A marionette sighs, looking at all of the villains. Let's wheel Batsy down there and surprise them, he whispers with glee. Within the room, the Riddler stands atop one of the old subway cars, trying to convince the group that they need to come together, that they need to find the traitors that are within their midst, such as the government-made supervillain Typhoon. But he stops short as he is interrupted. Oh no, not him. Ladies and gentlemen, the Joker calls, entering the room with Mime and Marionette flanking him. I interrupt this repetitive affair to introduce my new friends, Marionette and... Who are you again? He suddenly asks, and then he pushes Batman forward with Two-Face calling out from the back. Who's the Batman? I mean, this time. How many fools have you dressed up like Batman and peddled around here, Joker? A few, I admit. The Riddler tries to get the meeting back on track, but some of the villains move forward, wanting to get the possible traitor out of the room. Typhoon suddenly powers up, knocking Penguin away, and he turns to the group, anger in his voice. I will kill all of... But his words are interrupted as his head suddenly explodes with the impact of a bullet. And chaos erupts into the chamber as the villains begin to run in every direction. I see smoke! <laughs> the Joker smiles, looking into the dark corner of the room. And in those shadows, the comedian looks down the sight of his rifle again, aiming for Marionette's head. But the woman dodges and one of the court of the owls drops to the floor instead. Mime leaps up onto the subway car and Blake takes aim. That's right, you crazy son of a bitch. Say cheese. But his sight is blocked as Giganta suddenly appears before him, swinging her massive fist, forcing him to jump away. He lands amongst the villains who then begin to crowd around him. Here we go, he sighs, pulling out his 45. And he begins to fire, nicking the villains and forcing them to scatter. Riddler yells for him to stop, but a round destroys his kneecap, forcing him to the ground. And Mime and Marionette run as a grenade explodes behind them. What a perfect day this turned out to be! Joker smiles, staring at all of the destruction before him, and Mime begins to slow, wanting to draw the comedian's attention. You're not gonna draw his fire! Marionette yells at him. That's the damn comedian! It sure is! Blake yells, stalking towards them through the smoke. Meanwhile, in a previous time, in her father's workshop, Erica hides under the counter as her father is beaten. She calls to him when he's hit to the ground, but the men discover her, dirty cops, and they drag her free and threaten her so that her father gives up the protection money that he owes. Afterwards, her father clutches her as they both bawl in tears. The next day, Erica entered the shop after school and she found her father had hung himself in the back room. And looking down, she discovered the note that he left. It told her to take the money in the register and run. The bell over the door chimes and the dirty cops enter, startled to find the young girl and her dead father. She snarls, grabbing her father's scissors, and she rushed at the two men. She stabbed the sharp metal under the first one's neck, drawing great spurts of blood that brought him to his knees. And the other cop pulls her off, throwing her heart against a wall. He pulled his gun, but Marcos comes out of the shadows, biting onto the man's wrist, throwing him. I'll snap your neck, he snarls, but Erica is behind him now, strangling him with puppet wire. That man died, foaming at the mouth. And meanwhile, back in Gotham, the two villains have hidden in a motel. Marionette yelling at Mime, not wanting him to go out to draw the comedian's attention. You're not gonna leave me to die so that I can run, she tells him, memories of their lives flashing before her eyes, of them living on the streets, of them fighting to stay alive, of them falling in love, becoming villains, her giving birth to their son while in prison, and later the two lay in each other's arms in bed. The thing about you freaks is you don't cover your tracks very well. Blake tells them, stepping out of the shadows in their room, pistol aimed at the pair. I only need one of you to tell me where Ozymandias is. Which is it going to be? He smiles. Suddenly his face goes rigid, and he falls to the floor, revealing the Joker standing in the open doorway behind him, his joy buzzer still smoking. He reaches down, pulling free the smiley face button, and he clips it onto his jacket. I like you two. You're making me laugh. <laughs> Marionette stands, looking down at Edward Blake. I was just thinking. I bet the comedian knows where Dr. Manhattan is. Dr. Dr. Manhattan? Who's that? 
I could use a good dentist. <laughs> it hurts when I smile. The rain pours down as Rorschach, Saturn Girl, and Johnny Thunder stand under a bus stop overhang. The Green Lantern glowing in Rorschach's hands as he turns to the old man. He's, he's my best friend. I've, I've been looking for him for a long time. Johnny smiles, looking at the lantern. You have a magic genie? Rorschach asks, looking at the lantern in his hand. Genie's a lantern? Like Aladdin? Saturn Girl looks at the masked hero, a smile on her face. Don't sound so skeptical. The light will help you find Dr. Manhattan, she tells him. Suddenly, the three are bathed in light, with Rorschach looking up at the searchlight of Night Owl's ship glaring down at them. <clears throat> he mutters. And inside, Thunder looks around in wonder as Rorschach begins to talk to Adrian Veet. Not that I don't mind meeting new and interesting people, Rorschach, but who are they? My name is Imra Ardeen. I'm designated as Saturn Girl. I'm a telepath from the 30th century, she tells him with a flash of a smile. Didn't mention that last part when we met. Rorschach tells Adrian with a pause. Where did you find her? Arkham Asylum. Of course you did. Adrian sighs. And the news begins to play on the screen behind them, showing the world its distrust of the superheroes. An image of Superman saving children in Benghazi runs next, and the newscaster explains that despite all, the world has maintained trust in the Man of Steel. Superman's why I serve the Legion of Superheroes, sent here to cleanse the time stream of the unknown anomaly that threatens him, Saturn Girl tells them, placing her hand against the screen. Reconsidering my suggestion of bringing them with us, Rorschach nods. I would imagine, Adrian agrees. He suddenly lurches forward, clutching his head, but Rorschach places his hand on his back, asking him, How long you have? Maybe none at all, Adrian tells him, and Babastus begins to meow, his eyes and mouth glowing blue. What's Cat doing? Rorschach asks. Adrian explains that Babastus is linked to John and is getting his scent from both the Lantern and the two others on the ship. When it comes to Dr. Manhattan, there are no coincidences, Adrian tells his partner. Meanwhile, elsewhere in Gotham, Do I see a smile? Joker asks. Because if I don't see a smile, I can make one. Edward Blake looks up at the strange clown now in front of him, struggling to ask where he is. The Joker's funhouse hideout surrounds them with all of its flashing lights and bright paint. The clown prince of crime comes forward, pinching the man's cheeks. You've caused quite a stir with my brethren, but I will give you five stars for that shot to Edward Nigma. <laughs> What's green, red, and missing a kneecap? Behind them, Marionette is admiring the Joker's wall of weapons and power tools. Don't be shy. My home is your home, he calls out. And the woman takes hold of a power drill, stepping forward to the restrained comedian. She leans forward, demanding to know how the comedian arrived in this world. How he didn't die. Why don't you uncuff me and I'll show you, sweetheart. The drill is driven into his arm, spouting blood and screams. Tell us where Dr. Manhattan is and I'll only drill into your arm. Who knows where and when that asshole is? Blake spits. All Doc asked me to do was take Veet's cat, okay? I was just having a bit of fun with the two of you. Marionette brings the drill close to the man's arm again, but she is interrupted when mine taps her, making an image of bat ears with his fingers. The two look over to see that Darknet has freed himself and is stalking across the room. He throws a smoke bomb and the two villains leap at him, but he barely ducks underneath Marionette's garriott as it shears off one of the ears on his cow. The kick sends her across the room, though, with Mime firing his invisible gun. The round cracks a window instead, though. I didn't see that coming! <laughs> outside, though, the Night Owl's ship is hovering outside of a building. Adrian prepares to step out, telling Thunder and Saturn that they should wait behind. He takes the lantern from them, basking in its glow. Inside, Batman tosses Mime away, throwing his hands up in time to stop Marionette's wire from cutting off his head. He screams in pain and anger, though, as the wire cuts into his wrist. A burst of flames erupt from the other side of the room as Joker places a flamethrower between his legs. Is that a flamethrower in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> Come on, somebody laugh! No time for laughing. Rorschach grumbles behind him. And on the other side of the room, Batman steps through the smoke, brushing the flames off of his cape. Rorschach, I was wrong about you. He growls, and Adrian agrees, stepping into the room. He greets Blake and Babastus meows as his eyes glow blue. What the hell is so special about that cat? Blake asks from his chair, and the cat begins to glow brighter and brighter, and energy begins to crackle between the cat and the lantern. Babastus sees John's temporal fingerprint on this lantern and you, Edward. As she feeds, John should feel a strong pull to her. To deny it would prove painful. 
The energy begins to shoot out around the room, with Adrian crying out, John, I demand that you show yourself. Suddenly, the energy stops, and Dr. Manhattan stands in the center of the room. Hello, John. I know who you are. Batman growls, and Joker throws up his hand, shielding his eyes from the naked Dr. Manhattan. Whoever you are, put clothes on for God's sake, or at least for mine. John doesn't do anything, though. Instead, he seemingly traces a circle around himself and the others from his world. What, what is he doing, Feet? Rorschach asks, and Adrian steps forward, still holding his cat. I'm sorry for summoning you here like that, John, but we need to talk. Batman and the Joker shield their eyes as the room is filled with a bright flash of blue light. The group of strangers is suddenly gone. The circle on the floor appears, floating over a waterfall in a deep jungle. So let's talk, John tells him. Adrian stands before John, asking him to return to their world to save it. You've come a long way for nothing, Adrian. I'm not going back, he tells him. John tells him that he is in the middle of something. That he knows that Adrian brought Marionette and mine here to try and appeal to his humanity. You believe that I was hesitant to use extreme force when I learned that Erica Manson was pregnant. He says, turning to look at the woman. But I did not spare you because you were pregnant. I saw what your child would do and I chose to save him, John tells her. Marionette crosses the small space, angry, demanding to know where her child is. What will he do? What child? John asks, stunning her. You're pregnant again. The two villains look at each other before pulling one another into a tight embrace. You will not change my mind, Adrian. I'm disappointed in you. I was, I am, I will be. He tells the man and Rorschach steps forward, trying to convince John. Adrian has changed, dying from cancer. John pauses, glancing at Vite. Adrian does not have cancer. Rorschach doesn't understand and Adrian tries to calm him, but Reggie grabs the man. You tell him the truth, Adrian, because you know I will. John explains, reaching out for the butterfly that is floating by him. Adrian looks at Rorschach, explaining that he lied to him because he needed him. Reggie, you see what I want you to see. You saw a man that wanted to fix the things that he broke. You were the mask of the man you believed to be your father's friend. In reality, Rorschach broke your father. Your parents didn't die in each other's arms. They were separated because your mother was so unhappy. No, no! Rorschach snarls, his hands tightening around Adrian's throat. Is it true? Rorschach demands, the world shifting around them and their small space is now floating over the rioting crowds that are filling the streets of Washington, D.C. It is, Manhattan tells him. And Adrian struggles to ask John why he came to this world and John explains, at first I thought I would live among them. I saw a vision of them most hopeful. I was hopeless, but then I saw nothing. The world flashes again, and now they are floating above a movie screen showing a Nathaniel Dusk movie. John looks at the actors explaining, I once knew the man named Carver Coleman. What does that have to do with anything? Adrian asks, but John holds up his hand. We've talked enough. The world flashes again and they are now back at the Joker's hideout, but Dr. Manhattan is no longer with them. Adrian reaches down for Babastis, hoping to get John back, but Rorschach lashes out, kicking him in the face. He falls and the vigilante falls on top of him, raining blows on him. The Joker laughs, shocking Batman with his buzzer, and he reaches up for Rorschach, offering some constructive criticism. But Rorschach turns, throwing the clown to the ground, beginning to beat on him. The Joker is laughing, reaching up, tracing a bloody smile onto Rorschach's mask. And he looks up to find that Mime, Marionette, and Adrian are all gone. Outside, Saturn Girl and Johnny Thunder look up as the hatch door opens up, revealing a broken and bloodied Adrian. He pulls himself inside. And when the two try to help, he knocks Saturn Girl aside and throws Thunder back with a strong kick. And he struggles to the pilot's seat. John refuses to call, he stutters. But with the knowledge that I have, Babastus, I realize I can save more than our world. I can save this one too. I can save everything and everyone. I have a plan. John appears on Mars, stepping off the small circle of the floor that he has brought from the hideout. Visions of an angry Superman coming at him flash in his mind as he begins to walk across the barren landscape. A picture drifts along the dusty ground. Does Superman destroy me, or do I destroy everything?
And there you have it. More of the Doomsday Clock reveals right here at Comic Storian. Now, we're going to be cramming a lot of this storyline out before it comes to its inevitable conclusion next Wednesday. So if you want to get more Doomsday Clock, you want to see how this concludes, subscribe to the channel and you will get just that. Hit that notification button and you will know exactly when we put out new videos. We cover everything from DC to Marvel to indie books to video games to movies. We basically do it all in the same manner. And if you look above at the banner, you'll see what our weekly schedule is so you can have a general idea of what you're looking for right here at the Comic Story and Channel. Thank you so much for your continued support. If you want to get early access to our videos, join our Comic Story and Army program over at Patreon. You can also find me over at Twitter at Comic Story and where we can basically talk about whatever you want. And other than that, thank you. I'll see you next time.